So let's talk about the five most frequently asked questions that I get around the Power X strategy and the wheel strategy. And we start with question number one. So if I do have the Power X optimizer, what are the best settings for Power X optimizer? So if you have this tool that I use every day to find the best trades, you know that you can run the scanner. And when you run the scanner, there are certain settings that you can choose here. So the question is, what are the best settings? Because one of the things that you can do is run the scanner for a certain risk reward strategy. And you see that there are a total of six different risk reward strategies. So we have a one and a half to three reward. So there's basically a one to two. Then we have one to three and then we have one to five in terms of risk and reward. And we have this with different risk factors. So it's either one and a half times the ADR, the average daily range, or we have it for two and a half times the ADR. So what is the best strategy to use? Well, right now for the past few months, since we introduced PowerX Optimizer 2.0, Mark and I are using the scanner for the quick trades. So this is what you want to choose. And we highly recommend that after you choose the quick trades, all you need to do here right now is click on reset to default. And this will bring up the settings that Mark and I like the best. So we only want to trade stocks long only. So right now we don't want to short the market. You don't want to fight the trend, right? And I mean, you know, what is the path of least resistance right now for the market? It's certainly up and we have been testing it over 700,000 trades. Yes, that is right. Let me say this again, 700,000 trades. And we found that over the past years, long trades have outperformed short trades, even though last year, as you know, we had this COVID drop where the markets dropped 30%. But even then, long trades, so buying only has outperformed short trades here. Anyhow, so we're, we're looking for a minimum return investment of 40%, a minimum winning percentage of 40%. We like to trade stocks that are between five and $250 in price. I want to see a profit factor that is higher than two and at least 12 trades. We also have a minimum volume filter of 500,000. So these are the settings. And when you run the scanner with these settings, this is where today, for example, it came up with these five stocks that you see up here in the scanner. All right, this actually brings us immediately to question number two. How exactly do I pick the best stocks for the PowerX strategy and also for the wheel strategy? Because these are the two strategies that I trade all the time. And yes, I am trading the PowerX strategy. I've been trading it for the past few months. After in the beginning of the year, we said, okay, let's wait until the market conditions are right. And they have been, uh, I want to say since the beginning of May. And right now it is, uh, well, the new day, it is July 1st as I'm recording this video here. But anyhow, so let's go back to this and let's take a look at these. First of all, according to the PowerX strategy. So the most important thing that I'm looking for regarding the PowerX strategy, I want to see number one, a smooth PL chart. So first of all, what does this mean? I'm zooming in here a little bit. Let's just talk about these PL charts below here and what they mean. So the PL chart means is how much money would you have made over the past two years if you had traded this particular stock, which right now here we are looking at disk A. So if I had traded this particular stock with the rules of the PowerX strategy, and as you can see, for most of the time, we would have made a little bit, lost a little bit, made a little bit, made a little bit more, then lost it. And then we had this massive run up. And after this, not a whole lot going on. That is not what I'm looking for. So my number one criteria is a rather smooth PL chart that goes from the lower left to the upper right. So that I see that over different market conditions that we had over the past two years, I would have made money regardless of the market condition with high volatility, with low volatility, markets that are that are crashing, markets that are rallying up markets that are quiet and markets also that are yeah, volatile, as we have seen that happen over the past year. So this is where I would say, OK, the number one criteria here is the PL chart. And here I would say disk A, no, thank you. And all I need to do here, if I want to say no, thank you, you see, I have a red X here. 
where I can just simply kick it out of the scanner and say, I don't even want to look at this anymore. And it appears, disappears for today. When we run the scanner again, it comes right back up. Okay. So here is disk A that we just looked at and here's disk K. As you can see, these are really very, very related shares. And what we see here, same pattern, not doing anything. We have this run up, not doing anything. So this here for me is a no. So therefore we are kicking it out. Let's take a look at DQ, DQ New Energy. So we're getting a little bit better. Not exactly what I want to look for, but we're going up sideways a little bit up. So we were stair stepping up. It is not bad at all. Just want to show you a couple of trades in comparison that I'm in right now so that you see what for me a good PL chart looks like. So CELH, that's a trade that I'm in. And we will talk about my trades here in a moment. And as you can see, this is nicely moving up. See, then if you want to take notes, here's another one, CLDX. So that's not the, the perfect one, but I took it last week. It was good enough for me. Plug, you see also here, plug beautifully, just going up in different market conditions. And that's what you want to see. Another one here is ZG. So ZG, Zillow Group, also really nice going up. So these are four that I'm in right now. And when we go back to the scanner and look at DQ, you see, compared to those, I'll probably mark this as maybe an A minus trade if I would grade trades or maybe even a B plus trade. I could say a B trade, definitely not an A plus or an A trade. And this is what you want to look for here with the PowerX Optimizer. So therefore also DQ, goodbye to you. Now, the next one that popped up was JMIA, uh, Jumia Technologies. And you see a very similar picture here, not doing anything and then suddenly jumping up and then not doing anything. Again, compared to those that I've shown you just before, CLH, CLDX, ZG, and what else did we have plug? This way, you know what a good equity curve should look like, a good PL chart. So here also super easy, no thank you. And then we have finally Vuzi. Vuzi is the Vuzix Corporation. This even has been trading below $5 for most of the time that I'm looking back. And then we see also here, pretty ugly, right? So to uh, answer the question, how do you pick the best stocks for the PowerX strategy? Number one, I look for a smooth PL chart. Number two, I look for trendability. So I want to see if their stock has been trending nicely and not going up like crazy and then crashing down. And number three, I want to see that there are no gaps. But you see, the beautiful thing is this here is the number one criteria. And if the PL chart does not look good, I don't even have to move on to number two and three. If this doesn't look good, we are done. So as you can see here, it take it is super quick to go through the picks that are coming up there. So now the question is, how do we do this for the wheel strategy? What exactly am I looking for right now? Now again. The two strategies completely different. The Power X strategy is a trend following strategy. If you would like to learn more about this, I'll leave a link in the description to a video series that I did. And here's also a book. I'll be happy to send it to you for $4.95. The wheel strategy, a trend following strategy. Now, uh, the Power X strategy. <laughs> Almost did that wrong. So here is the wheel strategy. The wheel strategy, on the other hand, is a strategy where you want to sell options and collect premium. So the idea is that long term you want to own the stock. So question here is, as we are talking about the five most frequently asked questions about the PowerX and the wheel strategy, how do I find the best stocks according to this strategy? Well, there is one main question that you need to ask yourself all the time. And here it is. Do you want to own the stock at the strike price of the put? that you're selling. So let's take a look at AMC. AMC theaters, as you know, for me, kind of a crazy stock. It's one of these, these meme stocks, right? That have been dimming around, then it jumped up, diddling around, jumped up from $12 to $72. And ever since here has been trading between 52 and $64 approximately. So between 52 and 60. So the key question is, first of all, do you want to own shares out of AMC? And here are the possible strike prices that we can sell put on at 40, 45, 47, 46. So you get the idea right here. 
is the 40 level. So do you want to own shares of AMC for $40? If so, then you can just sell this put and you would make 41% annualized in premium. For me, honestly, I don't like these uh, meme stocks. I did a video about this. I'll link to it in the description here about meme stocks and why I don't like them. I, I mean, I think with the meme stocks, all fundamentals are out of the way and they are just driven by the crowd. And I don't like that. But again, that's me. So this is where for me, you see, I can flag them here as maybe or I can flag them as no or as yes. So I'm flagging them as no. Then we have Blink Charging Company. And again, the question is, do you want to own Blink Charging Company? And honestly, I don't even know enough about this company to own it. Let me just jump over to my account and show you quickly the stocks that I traded here based on this strategy. And this way you get a better idea of what kind of stocks I'm looking for. So let's jump over here to the account and you see AA is Alcoa, Apple, ABT, Abbott Technologies, AG, Silver Miners, AMD, you know, the chip manufacturer, Apps, ARKK, trade this, Boeing, Camping World, Dropbox, Disney, Dick Sporting Goods, Etsy, EWZ is a Brazilian, I think a Brazilian ETF, GDXJ, Gold Miners, Halliburton, Hasbro, IBM. You get the idea. So I don't like to trade obscure stocks and here for me, blinking charging company, I don't know enough about them to trade them. So this is where for me, this is a simple no. Now, the next one that just popped up here on the scanner and this scanner refreshes every two minutes here is CGC, Canopy Growth Corporation. Now, this year for me is another crazy stock that went from nowhere to UPIA. Let's just have fun with this one. You see, it was trading here as low as $10 and then went all the way up to $57 in a short period of time crashing down. So here, the key question that you need to ask yourself do you want to own this stock at 2250 because that is the strike price that is recommended for me the answer is no so you get the idea so let's just summarize very quickly number one how do you pick the best stocks for the power x strategy well for the power x strategy i'm looking for a smooth p l which stands for profit and loss graph right that goes up from the lower left to the upper right over the past two years where we had all sorts of different market conditions for the wheel strategy, it's even easier because the key question here for the wheel strategy is, do you want to own the stock at the strike price of the put that you sold? And if the answer is yes, I would love to get assigned, then good for you. And I'll show you the traits that I'm in here in just a few moments. Okay. So is this helpful thus far? If it is helpful, just click on like really quick. This way I know that you're enjoying this video, but let's talk about question number three. And question number three is the wheel strategy is amazing. And I agree. It is absolutely amazing because thus far with the wheel strategy over the first half of the year, I made a little bit more than $100,000, $106,000. And this is based on a $250,000 cash account on with this $250,000 in cash, getting $500,000 in buying power because I'm using a margin account. So, I mean, if you make in six months, $100,000 based on $250,000 in cash, I would say that's pretty good at least in my book, because I like to look for SRC profit and that stands for systematic, repeatable and consistent. But the idea here is that you're selling put and that you're getting assigned. So what happens if the market crashes and what happens if you're getting assigned in all of your positions? Yes, that is absolutely a valid concern. Let's take a look at the most recent market crash that we had. And in order to do this, I'm going back here to the Nasdaq. So what happened here, as you know, going here, da, 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 need to go back a little bit to the COVID crash. Here we go. So this is what happened last year when the market crashed 30%. So what do you do then? What if you're assigned and the stock goes down by 30%, maybe even 40%. And as you know, right now I am in such a position. I am in right. So. I've shown over and over what you do then, you simply fly rescue missions. So what does this mean? What does it mean to fly a rescue mission? It means that you're selling more puts at a lower strike price. Let me give you a very specific example of a stock that I'm in. Right. Let me just go to a daily chart here and I'm going back to where we are right now today. 
With right, I sold puts at a strike price of 2150. And then the Hindenburg report came out. I was assigned and I was the proud owner of, I believe it was 7,000 shares. I'm not quite sure. I have to look it up. So anyhow, I owned quite a few thousand shares at a strike price of 2150. What I did then as we were plummeting down. So as soon as you see that a stock is trading around 30%, below the assigned price and now you're experiencing drawdown in your account this is when you start selling more puts and the idea is that you buy more shares at a lower price that's what they call dollar cost averaging and it's bringing down your cost basis by doing this by selling more puts i have been able to lower my cost basis to 1579 now, again, today, right now, Ride is trading at $10.38. So that's not good. I've been trying to lower my cost basis a few more times. That has not happened because I sold more puts at a level where I did not get a sign. Anyhow, since I have been able to collect more than $15,000 in premium thus far, I've been able to lower my break even to $14.17. Now, again, this, the break even, is higher than this. So here at this point, what I'm trying to do is I continue to reduce my cost basis and I'm looking for a little pop. Now, it did happen a few weeks ago. We actually did have a pop <laughs> that happened right here. See, this is where it right quickly went up to actually $15.80 right at my cost basis. Where is the deal? At that time when it happened, I was sitting on a plane, so I could not even react. I did not see what was happening. And by the time I landed, this is when right on that particular day was already plummeting back down to $11. Anyhow, so the question is, what happens if the market crashes? This is when you follow your plan. You see, I even have a mark on my desk here that says, follow your plan. If you would like to have this mug, I'll give it to you at cost. I think it's like $9 or something like this. It's, it's horribly expensive if you have something custom made on your mug. But I, I think it's still a very good reminder that you can have on your desk that you just follow your plan. And this is what I'm doing here. So this is how I've been able to collect that much premium. And yes, I am continuing to work this trade. And this is where you might be stuck in a position. The good news is while you're stuck in the position, you can still possibly generate more premium by selling more calls. By the way, it happened to me a few times before. So this is not my first rodeo, as you can imagine. It happened to me in TQQQ. It happened to me in Apple. It happened to me in GDXJ. In this book, I described the TQQQ trade in detail. I think it's over 30 pages or something like this where I'm dissecting it step by step. And I have also made some other videos about how to fly rescue missions. And uh, they're right here on the channel. I'll leave a, a link in the description to that. Okay, so this is what do you do when the market crashes? Well, you follow your plan. And if this makes you nervous, then don't trade the wheel strategy. Hear me very loud and clear. The wheel strategy is not for everybody. I know that you might be watching and say, oh my gosh, he made more than $100,000 in a few months. I want to trade this strategy. Yes, and you have to be able to withstand or to go through a drawdown. And this might not be for you. And if this is not for you, then there are other trading strategies where you do not have a large drawdown as I'm experiencing right now in right. I'm not nervous about this. I'm okay. And I talked about this many, many times. I'll link to the other videos here in the description because I want to talk about step number four or most frequently asked question number four is, what account size do I recommend for the PowerX and for the wheel strategy? Let's actually start with the PowerX strategy. And I'm uh, switching over here uh, to just a standard notepad so that I can make a few annotations here. So right now we are talking about account size. We start with the PowerX strategy. So I recommend an account size of $10,000. And here's why. Because with the PowerX strategy, you risk 2% of your account on any given trade. Now, if you risk 2% of $10,000, it's a risk of $200.
So $200 is very affordable. Most traders can afford to lose $200 on a $10,000 account. And there will be quite a few stocks that are meeting your criteria. See, the challenge is if you are starting with less money, let's say with $5,000, it is possible, but now the risk is still 2%. So now you're risking $100. So now you will find fewer trading opportunities just because there's not many stocks where you can risk that little. They have to be very inexpensive stocks. And if you go even further down and what about starting with $2,000? Well, if you risk 2%, which is recommended with the PowerX strategy, it's only $40. And you see, you have to pass on most opportunities that are coming up on the scanner according to the strategy, simply because you cannot afford the stocks that are coming up. So that's why I recommend to start with $10,000. I believe it is possible to get started with $5,000. And again, this here is for the PowerX strategy. Okay, let's now talk about the account size for the wheel strategy. So for the wheel strategy, I recommend that you have an account of at least $20,000 in cash that you can turn into $40,000 of buying power in a margin account. I really do not recommend to start with less because you will have the same problem that you can't find enough trades. We will go back to the scanner right now so that you see exactly what I mean. So. Uh, what PowerX Optimizer does, it, it calculates the right amount of contracts based on your account size. So you see, I have the buying power here. And if I put in a buying power of, let's say, only $20,000, now I'm looking for trading opportunities. So one of the trades that I recently entered on Monday was UAL, United Airlines. So with United Airlines, yes, you could trade one contract, one contract. However, if you're looking some other opportunities that are appearing on the list, and again, right now there's nothing that is really appealing on there. But if you look at, uh, I don't know, let's just take a look at AMC for the heck of it. And let's say, okay, we want to trade AMC here. Ah, here you also got lucky because AMC is only trading at 53 cents. So you can trade one contract, but what will happen is that you often see, instead of trading one contract, it will show you zero contracts just because your account is not big enough. So this is why I recommend that here you have a buying power of at least $40,000 because you see when you do this now at least you can trade one or two contracts of most of the stocks that are coming up here. Especially when it comes to the wheel strategy, bigger is better. And I told you my buying power here on the $250,000 account is 500,000. So this year where I'm able to trade 20 contracts on United Airlines and 26 contracts right here on AMC, if I choose to trade it this way. Okay. So just wanted to talk about this because it's always coming up. And again, here for, for the wheel, bigger is better. <laughs> okay, good. So uh, let's see, let's talk about question number five. And question number five is, when is the best time to trade? Do I have to watch the markets all day? And again, this is where super easy. I will distinguish this question between the PowerX strategy and also the wheel strategy. Let's talk about the PowerX strategy first. Here is what I like to do. I want to share my trading routine with you. And uh, by the way, I did a more in-depth video on my trading routine. I'll link to it in the description. You might enjoy it. So I am in central time. So central time is Chicago time or here Austin time. So at 8.15, which is 15 minutes before the markets open, I'm running the PowerX scanner. And as you have seen, it only takes me a few minutes here to say yes, yes, no, no, no and find the best stocks to trade. If I find a stock to trade at 8.30, this is when the markets open. This is when I place my PXS trades according to the PowerX strategy. Also at 8.31, one minute after the markets open, I start watching the wheel scanner and I'm doing this until 9 a.m. And this is 30 minutes after the market open. And this is when I usually stop 
trading. That's when I'm done for the day. So my work day, if you want so, is 45 minutes long. I don't know about you, but with a 45 minute work day to make more than six figures in just six months, I'm not complaining. I like that idea. So no, you do not have to watch the scanner all day, especially when you're trading the PowerX strategy. You can watch it in the open or you can just place a so-called stop limit order. And this is what I often do there. So using a stop limit order, you don't even have to watch the open of the market at all. So you can place that the night before if you're busy throughout the day or uh, depending on where you live, you might have to get up in the middle of the night or it's in the middle of the afternoon for you and you have other commitments if you live in Europe or if you live in Asia, middle of the night, anyhow. So this is where you can do this. And again, most of the opportunities, according to the wheel scanner, they are actually coming up in the first 30 minutes. This is when I place most of my trades. And after this, I go on with my day. There's no reason for me to babysit the trades all day. So anyhow, these are the five most frequently asked questions around the PowerX and the wheel strategy. Hope that helps. And uh, right now I'm going to link to these videos uh, that you have more information about the PowerX strategy and the wheel strategy, and they will pop up here. So head over there, depending on what strategy you like best and watch these videos.